what uh, we're going to talk about and what we focus on here and what our actors here at our Audition Club really focus on is five things. Uh, and that big picture is, number one, focusing on your audition mindset and your identity. Uh, thoughts become actions, but everything begins with thought. So whatever you're thinking is and whatever your mindset is going to determine what you get in your life. So uh, if you're fucked up up here, uh, it's going to translate. Uh, so that's what we focus on first. Uh, number two is it does come down to a numbers game. More auditions uh, are likely going to be in. Uh, you could go back to that, to that first list, Brandon. That's cool. Um, and then we'll go through each one individually. Um, finding more auditions. Um, the more auditions you submit for by the numbers, chances are the more gigs you're going to book. Um, but also you want to improve. So it's really two things. If you look at the math of, of how to book more roles, it's submit to more auditions, take more swings, take more at bats, and then improve. So turn up the dials on your preparation and on your, the craft of your storytelling, uh, meaning also take being in classes and taking workshops so that you are improving. But if you're finding more auditions and then you're, uh, this is so simple, but it's like some people ask, well, how do I work more in television and film? Submit more auditions and submit stronger auditions, meaning increase your audition prep. Uh, number four is shooting winning auditions. So actually uh, your habits and uh, processes on the day. Uh, and number five is building a team, building a community. Uh, so we're going to talk a little bit about all those things. Uh, make sure throughout, take some notes. Um, feel free in the chat if you have questions or you want clarifications, pop those in. Um, but just a, li a little review on mindset. Everything begins with uh, your mindset and your thoughts. Whatever, a lot of times people think like that they're, I don't want to get super meta here, but it's going to get kind of meta is there's not really one fixed reality. Whatever your perspective is uh, becomes your reality. Whatever you're thinking is it, like the same thing can happen and it really affects one person and it doesn't affect another person at all. Or one person, it makes them cry and another person, it makes them laugh. So it's different and it's subjective. And wherever you are in your life right now, it's the, it is the function of your thinking, a function of your thoughts, your limiting beliefs, the stories that you tell yourself. Uh, for actors, maybe it's, um, I'm not getting enough opportunities, or I don't have the, uh, I need a better agent, or I need an agent, or I'm not in the right market, or they never give me enough time to audition, or I don't have money to invest in a home studio, or um, I just don't know the right people, or I just need to be given that one shot, whatever those thoughts are. Um, you also might be an actor who's just thinking, oh, I'm just a background player, or I'm just a one-liner. Um, so smashing through that mentality. And really, I'm assuming if you're on this call, your goal and your long-term goal, if your goal is to be a professional, is to be a leading player in television, film, um, uh, in on theater shows, but to be a lead player, to be the lead role and to be the lead role in your life, not to be a background player, not to be a one-liner or a bit player. And that's all well and good. And if you want to do that for, um, like, that's great. And you always hear the, the term, there's no small roles. There's only small acts. There's only small actors. And that always made me laugh. And cause I'm like, yeah, there are small roles. Like I get it. I get the, the mentality of, okay, we need a team. And sometimes you need bit players in sports. You need someone to come off the bench and in baseball, you need pinch hitters and backup catchers and backup, backup catchers. But, that's not who you aspire to be. I don't think any little kid is like, oh, you know, it'd be great to be the backup bullpen catcher one day in the major leagues. No, you want to be an all-star. You want to be a Hall of Famer, uh, which means a little bit of a shift in mindset. Uh, because, yeah, there are small roles. They have, uh, <laughs> they have a smaller paycheck attached to them. They have a smaller amount of lines. They usually have a smaller trailer. Usually a smaller vehicle comes and picks you up. Uh, all of those things. Um, your name is smaller in the credits. Uh, so there are small roles. So it's at some point making the decision, what are you playing for? Are you playing for the big leagues? Are you playing for leading roles? Not to say that you, you, you're not, it's not going to be a process. And I'm not saying immediately like, oh, never take a one line role. But at some point, you got to set your mind to that. Are you aiming to just do little day player roles and work here and there? Or are you aiming 
to become so good they can't ignore you like Brandon said and like Steve Martin said so that you're stepping up and that becomes uh, something that becomes your identity too uh, because if you start booking little day players uh, that's great and you know make some cash but also uh, if you become satisfied with that then I mean you it's a it's a balance you want to be grateful for it um, but also if you're striving for something more than that, you have to set your target at that uh, mentally and, and with your identity. So we talked about stepping into the hero mindset. So I just want to urge all of you, you got to smash those limiting beliefs. If you're still telling your stories and if you believe that story, it's slowing you down. It's not serving you. So really monitor your self-talk. Monitor what you say that when you get an audition or the day before, if you're saying things like, oh, I didn't have enough time for this, or oh, I'm not right for this, or um, um, like uh, all, all those limiting beliefs, it's usually, or it's like about the writing or ah, this writing, ah, just where you're just, you're basically telling yourself reasons that you're not going to book the role. It doesn't make any sense. If you understand anything about psychology, you need to understand that you need to think, think the win and see it and visualize it first. And then you, you live into that. Um, it's like the world is a reflection of you, um, but it starts with, with this, um, what you are seeing in here ends up being what you see out here in the real world. So you need to start there. Uh, Joao says for day three, he's hoping to learn how to be an audition hero and give my best audition performance for his dream role. Shout out to Joao. Actually, he posted his video in the Facebook group. Uh, his dream role is to play Superman or the son of Superman. Uh, thank you for that video. That was great. Uh, so moving on from mindset, uh, you guys get the mindset thing, but what does that mean? How do you like, how do you change that? Like it's what you're feeding your mind, who you're around. Does your, is your Facebook feed and Instagram feed full of people complaining about shit? And the only, every time you, you go on social media, it's just tweaking you and making you feel like shit or it's making you judge other people or it's making you feel inferior because you're comparing yourself to other people or are you feeding yourself with positive influence and positive channels like subscribe to podcasts read the books follow the people who are putting out inspirational and growth-minded things online um, really monitor what's going into your head uh, because if that's fucked up it's very difficult to be successful <laughs> it's very hard when you're, uh, if your thoughts are all backwards and just aren't aren't aligned, then it's going to be difficult. Uh, so next thing after mindset is working on finding more auditions. Uh, it's a it is a numbers game. So um, and now we live in a global world. So it's like, are you subscribed to all of the casting sites, uh, all of the Facebook groups? all of the online uh, places where you can get access to these submissions. After day two, I want to tell you a funny story. In day two, we talk specifically about some of the tactics and some of the websites. So if you're looking for some of that info, you can go back to day two. Literally that day, remember I talked about a little tactic where you, when you're on social media, when you see audition postings for, for things that don't fit you, but you know people, and then you tag them. So you end up tagging people in other castings because you're like, hey, I read this casting. It seems like a cool gig. It seems like you'd be great for it. And then casting starts to see like these names pop up with vouchers and recos. Well, the funny story, that day, like an hour on. So two days ago on Tuesday when we recorded this, about an hour after we did the, um, I didn't tell you this, Brandon, but an hour after we did the day two broadcast, I got tagged on Facebook several times in the same posting for a $50,000 gig to be a cross Canada host for a Petro Canada national like web series slash like promotions campaign. And I got tagged, boom, 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 boom. When it came up uh, only because those were other actors who know me and I have for sure tagged them in gigs online. So talk about a great lesson. I, I talk about that being like a hack give first and then you get things back. That day I got tagged saying, hey, Lars, you'd be great for this. So they saw the breakdown and they're like, Lars, you'd be great for this. Uh, unfortunately, I'm not able to do it, uh, but uh, because I'm union and it was for a non-union casting. Um, but uh, that's like right there. I teach you guys one little hack. And because I've tagged enough people online in casting post postings, 
I get tagged all the time. That was, imagine if I didn't get that tagging and I could audition for that. That's $50,000 that I, you would lose out, right? So that's a huge tip. So finding more auditions, uh, that also means optimizing all of your uh, marketing materials too. If you have an agent, do they have everything that they have can have to, to sell you? So do they have up-to-date demo reels? Do they have up-to-date headshots? Uh, are all of your measurements on there? Um, do you have the demo reels, but also do you have clips? If you're, if you have special skills, do you have videos of you? It's like, there's no better time and easier time to record videos. So if you can ride horses, if you can fence, uh, if you're a boxer or a fighter, do you have all of those locked and loaded? So the day when the day comes and it says looking for someone, or it says like this kind of experience would be a bonus. Um, so you can submit a winning audition for the, for the scene and the size itself, but then, oh, by the way, here's my, my fight choreo video or my, um, my singing demo or, or my dance demo. So think about that right now. If you're a dancer, do you have a dance demo locked and loaded? Not something when you get the audition that you have to record, but just something that's always there to show people, um, to, to get your foot in the door. Um, is it fighting skills? Is it horseback riding? Whatever your special skills are. Maybe it's maybe it's some special accents. Do you have a clip of an accent? Do you have a couple strong clips of a monologue or two or six um, if you have more than that? So it's just all of your materials. If you want these opportunities, you'd be fucking amazed if you I bet I bet we get a story. I'm going to throw a challenge right now. I bet for those of you who are thinking a special skill, whether it's baseball, football, basketball, skateboarding, uh, literally any special skill. If you don't have a video for that right now, I bet if you go out there and record, doesn't even have to be anything fancy, a minute to two minutes. I swear to God, I'll bet all of you, if, if you do it, someone is going to say, I made that video and within a week later, I got an audition request asking for someone with skateboard experience and they asked me to send in my skateboard demo reel. And I fucking just did it last week. I a thousand percent believe if if you guys make that video, you're going to get that that request. It's funny how it works. You take the steps and you kind of meet the universe halfway. And all of a sudden they're like, ah, I see you're willing to do some work and you're making some steps in the right direction. I will meet you in the middle. Uh, happens all the time. Um, so those are some things that you can do to find more auditions. Uh, obviously, we're always helping people here at Actors Audition Club uh, find more. But I, the other big thing is it's a global community now. So you don't have to just look at your local home markets auditions. Subscribe to all the newsletters like Google everything right now or Google, as we like to say. Uh, use Michael Google and Google it. Um, all right, let's move on from um, from uh, finding more auditions. Um, if, and actually, before we do that, uh, we'll keep it on auditions. Some of you might not have agents. So again, that means shedding that belief because you don't have an agent that you can't get auditions. You can find them or rather than lamenting that you don't have an agent, specifically set some intentions to get an agent as well. It's like either a lot of, there's a lot of people out there complaining about something that they don't have while simultaneously not doing anything to get that thing that they're complaining about that they don't have. So they just stand in the middle of no man's land complaining about their lack and they're not doing anything, which is insane. So uh, make a plan to get an agent. And if you need some help with that too, uh, you can reach out with us. We actually have some training in Actors Audition Club that speaks to how to get an agent and the best strategies and tactics to do that. Um, and there's some things you, you don't want to do it too early and you don't want to do it in an unprofessional manner. So um, uh, that's what I'll say about that. Um, doesn't You have no excuse. There's It's a global opportunity and there's never been more productions out there producing um, television, film, streaming content. So there's never been a better time to be an actor. So there's more auditions out there. So you want to, uh, you want to manifest some of those for yourself and uh, up your numbers. Uh, the next thing is preparing for your auditions. So to make a transformation, to get something new in your life, you need to change something. You need to become something. You need to learn some more skills. You need to adopt some new beliefs. Maybe you need to bring some new people into your life. But for circumstances to change, you need to change. The outputs don't change if the inputs uh, don't change. So 
Um, what are you doing to up level your audition preparation? And the, that's a no brainer. If, if you're at, if you're in your life right now complaining to yourself that, oh, I, I'm not working enough as an actor, but also getting auditions, then you need to be thinking, what can I be doing to seize those opportunities? There's no point getting a bunch of auditions and then just throwing them away. So what are you doing to up level your preparation? Professionals prepare, they follow systems, they follow checklists, and they put in more time. They just put in more time. They're more prepared. They, they prepare and they rehearse until they can't get it wrong rather than preparing and rehearsing till they just get it right. Or Brandon was using the word memorize. A lot of actors just trying to memorize lines. So they'll memorize lines, just going, uh, 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 saying it in their head, blah, 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 blah. not connected to it. There's no meaning or intention behind it. They're not understanding the scenes. They're not understanding relationships. They're not understanding what they want in the scene, but they're just like memorizing lines and memorizing words. And then worse, uh, they're not even really doing that well because they only work on it and mem memorize it until they just they get it once and they're like, yeah, I got it memorized. And then they go try and record an audition and it's a whole different thing. So it's about rehearsing and preparing over and over and over again. We use that 250, uh, but 50, 100, 250 times, a thousand times is what Michael Caine used to say. He would he would literally when he was cast in a movie, he would have said his lines out loud a thousand times before he stepped on set. Um, so it's just where is your preparation? How much are you preparing? That allows you to relax. It allows you to be confident, allows you to play. And so it's just if you're looking to be top level, the further you go in this business, the further um, the, the, the more fierce the competition is going to be. So you need to be up leveling your game. <laughs> uh, ADM's new expression for this. Click it out. Yes. With that, we, we showed you that clicker. Um, the little clicker so you can record how many auditions or how many uh, rehearsals you're doing. Uh, what's next here? Uh, number four is specifically how to shoot auditions. So the other thing, uh, if you've up-leveled your mindset and your identity and you're stepping into this hero mentality, then you're finding more auditions by using some of these strategies and tactics and actually just putting the energy out there and, and seeking out auditions, whether it's for yourself or through your agents and through your reps. And then preparing more so that you're up leveling your prep so that when it comes time to shoot, the next thing you do is, OK, what have I done to up level shooting? Uh, what's my camera situation like? What's my lighting situation like? What's my backdrop? If you don't have a home studio, you need to at least look at it and be like, well, what can I do better right now? Could I have a better backdrop? Could I have slightly better lighting? Can I invest in a new webcam uh, or a new cell phone camera? or a better tripod or a better laptop stand. Um, again, professionals use professional equipment. It's gonna make your life easier. It's gonna make you look like, refresh, like a professional. It's tough to, I would imagine it's tough for casting to look at, even if the performance is great, if on camera, the lighting is shitty, the sound's shitty, they can't really shitty, they can't really see you. Um, maybe it's a weird backdrop or distracting backdrop, or you're just in your, bedroom and there's laundry on the all over the place it's going to be hard for casting to look at that and be like oh this is a television and film professional and i'm going to cast them in a professional million dollar production and trust that they're going to show up as a professional no they're just going to be like oh this clearly isn't someone who has seemed uh, doesn't seem to invest in themselves doesn't seem to have reached a professional level maybe the performance is great so maybe they show promise but um, what are professionals doing? So you got to ask yourself that. Uh, so do you have a system though? Do you have, uh, when you get an audition, do you know where you're going to shoot those? Do you know when you're going to shoot them? Do you have a buddy or a team or a community or a tribe or a studio that you go to? Uh, it shouldn't be something that every time you stress about. It's supposed to be fun. It's supposed to be um, a relaxing, it's supposed to be a performance. So you should see it like, oh great, I get to go do a mini play or I get to record a short, a mini short film, not, oh my God, where am I going to do this? When am I going to do this? When's the deadline? And then you're bugging your family and friends and you're bugging your wife or you're bugging your kids and, and you're getting in some weird relationship problem because uh, they don't really want to be helping you with your auditions because that's not their world. Uh, and then just reminding yourself too, 
every series that you've ever seen, every movie that you've ever watched, use professional crew and they use professional actors. So think about the, the thought process of, oh, I want to get on a professional show that uses professional crew, professional actors, but I'm going to do it without professional equipment and without professional help, meaning you're using a neighbor or a family member um, and you haven't invested at least a little bit into your system. So again, it's about up-leveling things. So uh, that's the transformation number four that you can make. If you make a transformation in you, how you shoot, where you shoot, your studio, uh, who you're actually working with in those auditions, working with someone who is a professional, uh, either an actor who has te television, film, and um, theater experience, uh, or someone who works in the casting world. Uh, so they maybe they understand production, maybe they've worked um, behind the camera before as well. Someone that works professionally in the business and understands what you're even doing. Uh, <laughs> Uh, all right. Uh, number five is building your team and your community. So you up level your mindset, you increase the number of auditions that you're getting, you up level your preparation and you up level how you're shooting them and the professionalism of your actual audition files and the recordings themselves. Then you add in team and community, meaning You've got uh, a group of people that you're working with on the craft. Hopefully you're all in classes on a regular basis. We strongly suggest Tom Todorov's studio. They run a weekly Zoom session. Uh, we actually have a, um, we'll, we'll post it in the notes. We have a, a discount code uh, for those who do wanna join. We've got a discount code that'll give you 15% off. And they also offer the first, uh, the first class free. Uh, it's amazing class, transformational every week. Tom's amazing. A lot of the lingo that our session directors here at Laughing Vikings Actors Audition Club use are based on Tom's teaching because um, he's the, in our opinion, he's he's the it's the best system that we've ever run into. So, assuming you're in those classes, um, it's about building that community and building a team. That's what we have here at Actors Audition Club. And one of our favorite things is how we get to celebrate other actors' wins. Uh, because it can be a lone wolf um, syndrome uh, type career where you can feel like you're just in it, like you're just out there in this weird world fighting for auditions and fighting for roles for yourself. But all of a sudden we have a community where people that you can help rehearse with, people that you're getting help with, with your auditions and recording, people to share stories of victory, people to share stories of frustration, people to share resources with. Uh, just some place to commune with. It's like you you want a community. There's a there's a reason we're um, we're social beings as humans. Like we didn't all grow up being lone wolves and we just go off into the into the bushes by ourselves and live as nomads for the most part. Uh, it's because we like to be around people and it's that idea of one plus one equals three. So if you those are the five what I would say are build transformational building blocks. So for you to take the transformation from wherever you are now with your uh, struggles, frustrations, stresses, and anxieties in auditions, then you want that transformation to become an audition hero. Focus on those five things. That's what we focus on here at Actors Audition Club. Again, your mindset, your identity, how to find more auditions, how to up-level your rehearsals, how to um, up-level your actual shooting and recording of those videos, and then building a community, whether it's a friend or a neighbor, but someone who's in the business and is also a television film acting professional. Um, and you do those five five things, then it's constantly rinse and repeat. So every three to six months, go through those. Am I up leveling my mindset? Am I continuing to learn and grow? Am I continuing to seek out new audition opportunities and find more audition uh, opportunities and find new sources for those? Am I improving my rehearsal technique and my rehearsal process? Am I constantly up leveling my studio? So not just one time, but um, constantly looking at your, your setup. What can I be doing better? What can I be improving? How can you be increasing those percentages? Because you dial all those up. It's like if you just improve all of these little things, if you improve things five, five things, five percent, you end up with um, really an exponential increase in your in your numbers and in your success. Thank you.